Let's explore the symbolism associated with John the Evangelist in art. Eagles, pinkish red robes, body language, and other symbols distinguish John the Evangelist and it is worth our time to explore this topic. John the Evangelist, also known as John the Apostle, has very interesting symbolism associated with him in art. For the purposes of this content, we are going to consider John the Evangelist, John the Apostle, and John of Patmos all to be the same person. We will cover the different variations of the name towards the end. However, we should remind ourselves that this is a different person than John the Baptist. This particular John is known for writing the Johannine literature in the New Testament, which consists of the Gospel of John, the Three Epistles of John, and Revelation, which is also known as the Apocalypse. Depictions of John the Evangelist are very common in Renaissance art. This is because John was present at the crucifixion scene, and depictions of the crucifixion scene are very popular for obvious reasons. John's presence at the crucifixion makes him a popular figure in art, but it also means that he needs particular symbols to distinguish him from other figures. John is depicted as either a young beautiful man or as an old man with a beard. Occasionally you can spot a thin, faint halo just over his head. John is almost always wearing red or pink, or some variation between the two. The color can change from a very distinct red to a very light pink, although sometimes the red or pink garment is only part of the wardrobe. John is generally depicted with a book or some material to write with. This points to his writings in the New Testament. Also, John is generally depicted by an eagle. Each of the four Gospels and their respective writers have particular symbols associated with them, but John and his Gospel are depicted by an eagle. The eagle represents the soaring heights that John's material reaches. John tends to be more abstract and philosophical in his writings, and the eagle represents this. It is quite common for John to be placed on the Isle of Patmos, with boats and architecture in the background. Also, one can see the mysterious beings and images from the Book of Revelation with John. Much of the art representing John has many layers of symbolism. John's body language is also quite noteworthy. When he appears in the crucifixion scene, he tends to be positioned somewhere near the foot of the cross. When John is placed in other locations than the crucifixion scene, he tends to be looking upwards as if he is receiving divine inspiration. On occasion, we can also find John with a chalice and snake. This comes from the legend that John was being poisoned for his faith. Poison was a formal method of execution. However, John blessed the poison and it turned into a snake and slithered away. Thus, we see the chalice and snake in art representing John. Let's move on to talk about the different names for John as these shape the art depicting him. John is sometimes referred to as John the Evangelist because he is a gospel writer, particularly the Gospel of John. The term gospel means good news, and the Greek word associated with this concept is euangelion, which has the Greek prefix eu, meaning good, followed by the root angelon, which is associated with the concept of a messenger. Of course, angelon is the source for our English word angel. An evangelist is someone who shares good news. John is also referred to as John the Apostle. This is because he was one of the original twelve. Certainly, there were many more disciples of Jesus than the twelve apostles, but the apostolic language reminds us that John was one of the twelve. John is also referred to as John of Patmos. This is because he spent time on the Isle of Patmos when he experienced and recorded the revelation found in the end of the New Testament. In conclusion, things to look for when examining John the Evangelist are a young beautiful man or an old bearded man. Either way, he will be wearing pinkish red. He will probably have an eagle nearby and some books or paper and he will probably be looking up at the heavens to receive inspiration. It is possible he will be on the Isle of Patmos with a few mysterious beings, or even at the foot of the cross.